markets saw quite the rally today. Let's break down all the action with our panel. We have Randy Swan, Swan Wealth Advisors president, who thinks the bull run could be over soon. On the other hand, David Lutt, Stiefel Nicholas Managing Director, is predicting a double-digit gain for stocks in 2014. Uh, but let's start with Larry Shover, who's joining us from the pits of the CME. Larry, was this an all Janet Yellen or Park Washington, D.C.? Possible debt deal? Does it matter? Stocks jump today. I I don't know, Liz. Th this was like a six and a half hour bull rush, something I have not seen in years. Mm. And when you consider how quickly and violently stocks dropped last week, is as quickly and as violent as people came out in all senses of urgency getting exposure to the stock market. What's striking is how quickly positioning fell last week. And what that tells me is that sentiment is so stinking fragile, something we've spoke about week after week. I still think investors at their very heart lack conviction and are afraid of this market. Thus, we, can, 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 we will continue to ratchet higher. Well, David, let's you look at this market. I don't see much else except for conviction right now. I'm wondering if the pullback is over, David. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you guys, I mean, a lot of what we saw at the beginning of the year was short selling. A lot of people were hedging their books. They were trying to lock in gains yep. and protect yep. what was going on in 2013. But what we saw the last couple of sessions is a lot of that protection coming off. When the market was getting hit, we didn't see big mutual fund clients selling. We saw them starting to nibble once the market had a nice retracement back from that January high around the 1750 level. But today, it just felt like there was a tremendous amount of actions in the futures pits. A lot of these hedges come off people getting ready for possibly another upside move and that felt like the big driver in stocks today okay but randy swan is the voice of well perhaps reason we're not sure but randy you really <laughs> feel that we'll be flat to lower for 2014 even though as we as we had jeremy siegel the professor from wharton who has called many a bull and bear market saying these are the correct conditions for stocks to continue to move higher why do you disagree well, I think 2014 is going to be a transition year similar to 2007. I think we're going to see a flat to down market with an increase in market volatility. Why? Well, I think we've had a five-year bull run. I think there's extreme bullish sentiment at this point. And if we're frank, the, the Fed has not taken off the training wheels in the economy yet. Well, Larry, this kind of gets to your point as to whether the conviction is really there. I, it's certain, again, one day does not a trend make, so we'll have to wait and see what happens tomorrow, Larry. But is it conceivable that the pullback is over and that this is the beginning of a trend? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's keep in mind, conditions are changing. They're not collapsing. We're seeing cool downs in the United States and China, but we're seeing upside momentum in Europe. So in general, we're not collapsing. We're just cooling off a little bit. And it's okay for the market to sit and just gather momentum for a while. What we saw the last couple of weeks is uh, an outlier when we're mixing up position with sentiment. That's really all it was. But I do believe deep in my heart that we're going to see a 10 percent rally in 2014. Okay, uh, so now, David, I'm going to take Randy's side of this and say that, that we are due for uh, not necessarily meltdown. That would be a little too dramatic to say. But when you had the melt-up that we saw at the end of 2013, melt-ups are usually preceding meltdowns of sorts. You don't see that. At what point do we shake out some of the excess enthusiasm of this market? Well, I think, you know, you probably saw a lot of that going on in the last two weeks, Liz, you know, with the market really getting hit. I mean, the sentiment was terrible. I was starting to get rattled. A lot of traders were getting rattled, right, right. but we weren't seeing any kind yeah. of tremendous volume going on, especially from the big funds that were selling. You know, there are things that could certainly derail this market this year. I mean, we could see, you know, the wheels coming off with the emerging markets. Emerging markets were acting well today. We could all of a sudden see inflation ripping higher, and right now we're not seeing that. We could see a big spike in energy costs, and that's a big worry right now and possibly that was weighing on the market with nat gas and last but not least we could have some kind of geopolitical turmoil whether it is our midterm elections or whether it's something going on in asia but right now it just feels like the climate is right with the u.s economy improving a lot of the over enthusiasm seems to have come out over the last couple of weeks that we could start grinding higher well the question about inflation uh, randy has to do a lot with interest rates and so far we've seen interest rates pretty much trend down as people went into treasury bonds uh when they were worried about equities that trend may be changing though no I mean don't you think it's time that interest rates ticked up a little bit well actually I do think that interest rates probably are, are somewhat priced into the cake at this point 
You think I, you think this level is what they'll remain at for the rest of the year? Relatively speaking, yes. Wow, that's it. David, do you see that as well? Well, uh, you know, it's kind of stunning. I've been watching the 10 years, a lot of traders have been, and it's been gravitating between 2.5% and 3%. It could certainly stay in that range. But if we start seeing a gradual move higher, Dave, that's going to be fantastic for equities because that's going to be flushing a lot of money out of the bond market looking for somewhere else to invest, and that could certainly be the equity market. That was a phenomenon we saw the last couple of years when a lot of money was coming out of equities in the bonds. We're looking for that rotation. Do I see us going to 3.5% this year? No, I certainly hope okay. not, but I could certainly see us around 3%. Okay, then what, David, would you set, tell to the investors watching right now where to put their money if that is the case? Well, I think there's a couple of places you can look, Liz. I mean, first of all, the gold uh, complex is getting really, really interesting. I mean, you know, I like to invest in areas that are the most hated sectors. And last year, gold was absolutely one of the most well, hated the sectors miners, in the market. The miners were hammered, so you're saying go there yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. You look at the GDX, and the GDX, which is a gold mining ETF, that is starting to form a base. It's starting to get upside of some moving averages and starting to pick up momentum. It feels like a lot of the ETF liquidation that weighed on the complex seems to be over. A big tell for the GDX yeah. is going to be on Thursday. We've got its two largest components. We have Barrick and Goldcorp both reporting. There's so much negative sentiment built around all these earnings reports for some of these miners okay. that it feels like a lot of the bad news, if not all of the bad news is baked in, Liz. Hey, David, let's talk about retailers very quickly because they've been beaten yep. down since the beginning of the year, but oh. we got advanced retail sales coming out on Thursday in advance of that number. Do you think maybe tomorrow is the time to buy into retail? It certainly feels that way. I mean, retails were one of the leading groups today, Dave. And in front of that advanced retail sales, once again, kind of like gold, everybody knows the terrible news. We've been seeing all this economic data coming out about the weather. That's really weighed on a lot of these retailers. I've been watching the XRT, has been a lot of traders. And I'll tell you, it feels like a lot of the baiting is over there. It was one of the worst performing sectors so far right. this year. It definitely feels like it could pick up some momentum okay. to the upside, Dave. If you want to buy low, get in before the retail sales come out on Thursday. By the the way, XRT is the ETF that David likes. David Lutz, good to see you. Randy Swan, Larry Schober, stay with us. We're going to come back to you in a couple of minutes when the S&P futures close. Flappy Bird's creator pulls the plug on the popular game, as we told you yesterday, walking away from a huge moneymaker. But guess what? We are speaking with the woman, the only person who sat down exclusively with the game's creator. Were there bigger and more powerful forces at play in his decision to stop the money flow? Interesting story there. Also, the markets once feared tapering, but we saw a big move higher today, over 200 points at one point, despite Janet Yellen saying it's full speed ahead for the taper. So why such bullishness from the markets? Two Fed insiders reading between the lines coming next. Tell us what you think. Yellen was good for the markets today. Will investors continue to like what they hear from her? Tweet us at FBNATB. Your answers later this hour. Can you believe he actually thinks that I am really alive? The Closing Bell is sponsored by TD Ameritrade, bringing you the innovative Think or Swim platform. What if a small company became big business overnight? Like really big, then expanded. Or their new product tank. Or not. What if they embrace new technology instead? Imagine a company's future with the future of trading. Company Profile, a research tool on Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade. Tonight, catch Jerry at her new time at 5 with a look at the true cost of true love. Find out if a prenup should precede your vows. See it before you say I do. A user's guide to love and money on the Willis Report at 5, followed by Cavuto at a special time. You make a great team. It's been that way since the day you met. But your erectile dysfunction, it could be a question of blood flow. Cialis Tadalafil for daily use helps you be ready anytime the moment's right. You can be more confident in your ability to be ready. And the same Cialis is the only daily ED tablet approved to treat ED and symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently or urgently. 
Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medications and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sexual activity. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or if you have any allergic reactions, such as rash, hives, swelling of the lips, tongue, or throat, or difficulty breathing or swallowing, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis for daily use in a 30-tablet free trial. So Ally Bank has a Raise Your Rate CD that won't trap me in a rate. That's correct. Because I'm really nervous about getting trapped. Why is that? Uh, could, could Mark? <laughs> don't get out. <laughs> I have my reasons. Look, you don't have to feel trapped with our Raise Your Rate CD. If our rate on the CD goes up, yours can too. Oh, that sounds nice. Don't feel trapped with the Ally Raise Your Rate CD. Ally Bank, your money needs an ally. TripAdvisor, one of the world's largest travel sites, reporting earnings just moments ago. So let's head back to Nicole Pedaliti. She's on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with those numbers. Well, looking at a meat and a beat. So let's break it down here for TripAdvisor, which is trading higher here in the after hours. The earnings per share come right in line. This is the meat, 21 cents a share versus those estimates of 21 cents. So the closing value, 84.20. The bid ask in the $86 range, the high $86 range, nearly 87 bucks. There you go. There's the ask at $87. Revenue. As I noted, a beat there, 212.7 million, beating those analyst estimates of 205.46. So what's interesting about this as well is the total traffic in the fourth quarter. Total traffic for TripAdvisor in the fourth quarter grew 50% year over year. So that's some good news there. I was also looking at the click revenue, and that was on the rise as well. So it's looking good here for TripAdvisor. That came on the heels of some good news that we heard from Expedia recently as well. Obviously, they've been rebooking trip with airfares and hotels. We Thanks will be watching that stock tomorrow, see if it stays at that $87 range. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. The S&P futures are closing in less than one minute. Let's head back to Larry Schofer in the pits of the CME. Larry. Well, traders know that even though we punch through some key technical levels, it's going to take a lot more for us to get to the next level. We're going to need growth metrics, not just jawboning from central banks. And so with that, traders will be closely watching China's trade numbers tonight, as well as all the PMI, the flash PMIs next week. Also, keep in mind that one mistake that we make is we, we, we tend to conflate positioning with sentiment, and we cannot do that because being long does not mean we're being bullish. So there are two very different things, and that's a mistake that a lot of us made this past week. Larry, thank you. Larry Shover in Chicago.